We are at Muscle Beach today. Look at that. And so, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Guadalupe Acosta. So, what are you doing in LA, in Los Angeles? Taking it easy. Came here to visit with my Seagong, uh, Sifu Lamb, Sifu Gary Lamb. And uh, what's your martial art background? Uh, my martial art background, uh, as a kid, I studied some judo, elementary age kid. So I learned the basic balls, rolls, and throws. And then in summer, while visiting my grandmother, I also studied uh, some Shotokan karate and learned the basic punches, kicks, and kata. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, in junior high school, I studied uh, Reco Roman wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I competed and went undefeated my second year. Okay, cool. And then in the transition from uh, junior high school to high school, I started boxing. Yeah, so how old, amateur boxing. How, old, how old were you back then? At that age? So amateur boxing, the boxing probably yeah. like uh, 13 years old. Okay. And so previous Pretty. ages, elementary age kid. Okay. So the judo, so if you get an adult, uh, an adult uh, 10 speed, you put the chair as low as you can, my feet don't reach the pedal. Oh, that's small. And then small. when I'm riding that's the small. pedal, I have to stand because the bar is going to be hitting me like this. <laughs> and then that bicycle, I got to jump on it and jump off it. That's how small I am. <laughs> okay. And then when I ride to judo, it's sunny, but when, when judo's over, it's dark. And I'm a kid from elementary riding in the dark. I was scared. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and then, how went it? Uh, how did you uh, go from the amateur boxing? What happened after that? So from amateur boxing, uh, well, from amateur boxing. Well, I learned judo and karate because I'm always in search of kung fu, but kung fu's not available. You, you see karate, judo, and maybe the closest thing that might be different is uh, taekwondo. But mm -hmm. I'm always searching for kung fu, and I became a fanatic watching kung fu movies as a child. Uh -huh. My movies are the Shaw Brother movies. Uh, the yeah, guys yeah, with yeah. the long hair. Yeah, yeah. okay. So from there, what, one of the things I like there is about their philosophy, their honor, their respect. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Not just the fighting. Yeah. And uh, so from, uh, let me see, so from boxing, I found, finally found a Kung Fu school, which was a Cholai Fut school. Cholai Fut. Yeah, Cholai Fut. So from Cholai, from boxing, I went to Cholai Fut, and I studied Cholai Fut for a while. But you practice both, boxing and Cholai Fut. Actually, Fight. I stopped boxing and went all the way ah, to Cholai Fut. Okay, okay, Fight. okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And then after a while with Cholai Fut, I wanted to get back into the ring. Okay. And I wanted to kick. So then I started Muay Thai. Okay. Yeah. So then I did Muay Thai for a while, and I got a state title, uh, semi-pro California state title in Muay Thai. Okay. And then uh, after Muay Thai for a while, then I just stopped. And then uh, I came here. That was all in Fresno, Fresno, California. And then... Fresno is already uh, San Francisco? Where, where is no, that? this is all in Fresno. So Fresno is in the middle between uh, LA and San Francisco. Fresno okay. in the valley. Okay, okay. Yeah. So from Fresno and after Muay Thai, I moved to San Francisco. And in San Francisco, I started boxing again, amateur boxing. And then uh, from there, I met my boxing coach, the novice pooler. And uh, so the D pooler, yes, D yeah, pooler. Okay, yeah. So with him, I got the opportunity to turn pro. Okay, yep. So now from amateur boxing, I turned to professional boxing. So, how was how old was you were you back, back then? How old was I? Oh, I yeah. think when I turned pro, I think I was like 32 years old, I was already an old man. <laughs> and Tony Fat, when was that? Troll I Fat, so like, uh, so okay, so Muay Thai, I was 19. That's what I like. I was a teenager okay. when I started. Okay, yeah. So the Troy foot was up prior to that. So okay. 16. Okay. So okay. boxing, 13. Yeah. And, and then, then judo and karate, younger than that. Huh? And yeah. then after Muay Thai? So after uh, Muay Thai, I stopped. I'm still in Fresno. 
Then I moved to San Francisco. Then in San Francisco, I started boxing again, amateur boxing. And then from there, I met my boxing coach. How old were you back then when you started boxing again? Uh, well, I turned pro at, I believe, the age was 32. So 32 between 19 old. and 32, you do it mostly more time? Or kind so of? 19, uh, I might have stopped doing Muay Thai at 23, maybe. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, from amateur boxing in San Francisco Bay Area, that's when I turned professional boxing. Okay, yeah. okay. So, I got like, about 13 professional uh, boxing bo bouts. You can easily see them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. We got the links there. Yeah. We got the links there, video to it also. So, that's one thing I think makes me unique of other martial art instructors because first of all I don't brag about what I can do anyhow but and, <laughs> and if someone wants to see it they can go see it it's there on video <laughs> the ones I lost the one I won I don't mind they can go watch <laughs> yeah yeah so I so after boxing uh, I received the injury so I couldn't train I had to rest but I wanted to train so I was looking I, I know uh, Tai Chi and Wing Chun, they don't have a lot of twisting because I had a rib injury. So ah, I'm okay. looking for those two. One of those two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study. So while my body's healing, I want to fully train something else. Okay, okay. So I'm looking for Tai Chi and Wing Chun. Okay. And it just, uh, <laughs> it just happened that I went to a friend's uh, gathering party and his friend was my seeing Aaron Miller, who was studying Wing Chun. And he gave me a ride home and we started talking. He studied uh, Long Man Kong? He was studying Wing Chun underneath the Long Man Cam lineage. Okay. But he had already stopped and was already studying underneath uh, Sifu Greg LeBlanc, which is the Gary Lam lineage. Yeah. Yeah. So in San Francisco? In San Fr He was in uh, at the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Aaron was in Alameda, Sifu LeBlanc was in uh, Oakland. Oakland, yeah, yeah right. So I, I studied with Aaron for a, for a while, and then he took me to his school to meet his Sifu. And then upon meeting his Sifu, uh, his Sifu asked me to do an exchange. I will teach him boxing, he will teach me Wing Chun. So me and Sifu LeBlanc did, did an exchange, private, private lessons for one another. One day I teach him boxing, one day he teaches me Wing Chun. So that- That's nice. That went on for a while. And then I started going ahead and joining the actual class. So now I'm not just private, also class. And then I asked uh, Sifu LeBlanc, my Sifu, to uh, write me a letter to Sifu Gary Lamb. And so then I came to LA with a letter from Sifu Greg LeBlanc to Sigong Lamb. So when was that? Ah, I don't got the exact date. So maybe 08, maybe. <laughs> huh? Maybe uh, 07 or, or 08. Yeah, uh, 2008, 2000, 2007, 2008. 2008. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that long already. So okay. I was going back and forth just visiting uh, yeah. Yeah. Sifu Gary Lamb's school. Yeah. Just watching, just observing. Yeah. Okay. And then Sifu uh, Gary Lamb asked if I wanted to learn the wooden man. And so that's how I began in the level one curriculum, was a wooden man. Yeah. <laughs> so that was also how many years ago? You don't know? Yeah, I would say in 2007. Yeah. 2007, 2008. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you stayed with uh, Yung Chun Sao. Yeah, I stayed with Yung Chun Sao. I was impressed with, us, with Sifu LeBlanc, with his knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a very intelligent person and he explains things very well, mm -hmm. so I was like, "Wow, this is the real kung fu. This is real. This is what I'm. This is good stuff." <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and then of course was uh, Sifu Lam and his skill and ability, and then in Sifu Lam, there's a lot of people. So the one thing was us. Uh, the one thing was uh, Sifu uh, was Greg. Greg. Everyone was kind of new, so the only one who really knew how to do any of it was him. So it was kind of you're just. Working. I yeah, with Greg. I mean, yeah. 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 I, when I went there, there was only, I think, uh, three students besides myself, so there was four of us. Okay, and the <laughs> and other one... We're did, all new. And they didn't have experience, you were the experience. Yeah, they're still green as well, still yeah. beginners yeah. as yeah. well. And so the only one who knew how to do what was being done with him, was him. Yeah. But you're not yeah, yeah, practicing yeah. with him, you're practicing yeah, with each other, that, so it's kind of... Yeah, yeah, I mean... So the one, 
thing that's nice about Cebu Gary Lamb is there's a wide variety of people and with a different experience and different uh, background and different size. So you get you get a well-rounded uh, situation there, training with different people. And Sifu Lam is there to explain any, any question you have. So they, they got a good idea of what they're doing. Depending on what stage they're at, they can help you according to their understanding. But Sifu Lam's always there to answer any of your questions. So that was kind of nice. So you're dealing with people who have a different understanding of what specific exercise you're doing, plus Sifu Lam is there, yeah. <laughs> so what do you like the most about the uh, Sifu Gary Lam lineage, Yung Chun style? I like that he has a system set up. And uh, one thing that Sifu Lam always would say in a lot of his videos and maybe YouTube, he would say that he has a lot of fighters. And so me being a fighter, when I go to the school, I said, I don't see any fighters. <laughs> but the meaning behind that is the system trains your body to have a specific type of reaction. See? So maybe you're not a fighter, but your body's going to respond a specific way. So, so it's kind of like a mouse trap. It's designed to do this. Despite, oh, nice. the, despite yeah, yeah. the mouse trap. Yeah, 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 so the yeah. wood and the metal is not for killing mice. But you put them together into a system and when a mice touches that part, it kills the mice. So that's a killing mice thing. <laughs> <laughs> despite the piece of wood, despite the metal, and despite the cheese. Because cheese is for eating, you know, wood is for growing <laughs> trees, okay. right? But nice. when you put them together into nice. a system, nice, yeah. then something happens. It becomes deadly. Right, so Sifu Lam created a system that does this. And uh, I tested it because it was one of his students. Because I have good control, so I could, I could throw a live fire to your face and not hurt you. I could stop it before it hits you. Mm -hmm. So I told one of his students, okay, I'm, so I'm going to attack you. I want to see your response. And I was very impressed with his response. <laughs> because what happened is uh, it's like water going downhill. If it, if, it, if it hits this, it goes this way. See? So we've got uh, right directed. Right, so, and with every little gap, it's gonna go in. Yeah, so when I attacked him, he, he was naturally, despite himself, he wasn't a fighter. That guy's not a fighter, but he's a good mousetrap. See, so if you touch that cheese, this is gonna happen. So, See, he, so when he, I, can, he can apply the techniques. He can apply this technique despite himself. See, it doesn't matter if he's a fighter, if he even knows what he's doing. The drills, if you do the drills properly, your body's going to respond properly. So the more pressure I put, the more pressure will come to me when I open up a line. So what it is, it's learning how to be a spring. A sp so it is useful in a fight. Oh yeah, it's yeah. very useful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like a spring, you learn it to be a spring and it compresses and you make it stronger. And once there's no compression, you let it go, that spring shoots forward. Yeah, the yeah. seesaw feeling. Stick. Yeah. Yep, spring forward and energy, defending and attack in the same motion. So, and then uh, lately you've been training uh, your students yourself and uh, planning on opening a school yourself. Yeah, so my idea, uh, the way to upgrade is to upgrade those around you. So that's my idea. Make them good so I can be good. So you've been teaching them Yong Chun then? Yes. Our level one. Level one, level two. Okay, cool. But nice. but in my level one teaching, depending on the student, it's already the essence of the level two. Yeah, it's built up to it. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's preparing for it. But but actually, the flavor is there because what it is is uh, level two gives you a certain ability. See, so I could put that ability into the level one if back they're, again if they're able yeah, to yeah, un yeah, understand yeah, it yeah, yeah. without showing them the level two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And same thing, if I'm showing them level two, I can put the ability that you find yourself acquiring in the level three into the level two. Yeah. So what yeah. it is, it's a, it's a system, so it all works together. It has different stages of this. It has different stages and everything is everything. So even, so level one is not level one, it's already high level. It's just but you have to start with something, right? <laughs> well, the way I say I mean, it, if you have a... A Mercedes, all you know how to do is, or a Tesla, all you know how to do is drive it. But this has many functions that you don't know about. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, okay, okay. You can drive it. Yeah, I can drive it. But it's and it's high level. It's a basic but you function. don't know how to use the high level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then later but you can. still the same car. Yeah. And later you you gotta even uh, know how to fix the car. Yeah, you're gonna get the whole car at level one. It's just you don't know the functions yet. So the different levels will show you how to unlock the functions. So in Wing Chun, it's our which is it actually starts le high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is actually already there, you know, body, right? It's just unlocking the mechanism of your own body. Right. So you're learning how to make the unnatural natural. Yeah. And you're learning how to utilize your natural response. So I call it the startle reflex. Huh. You're learning how to use that. And so I'm, instead and of, huh, you're going a, bam, a, and then, a, yeah, you're releasing that <laughs> spring. <laughs> yeah, and then it tops out. Yeah. So and everyone has this. Huh. That's yeah, a so natural reflex. So you're learning how to direct that in a more positive manner for your own self and your own safety. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> That's right. Guadalupe right there. Greetings from Los Angeles, Wings Beach. <laughs>